Although this one is actually a pretty good size deer. But get back over and hold this, please. It kind of looks like more that. like an eel or I don't that's, know, a squid. That's the, that is probably, in my opinion, the most tender part of the whole animal. Mm -hmm. uh, is that tender loin right there. Now the back straps, you can see how nice and you, you can see how the grain runs this way right here. The way you cut these is across that grain. And I'll usually cut maybe like all three quarters of an inch piece and then stand that up and put it down in to fry it. Uh, this one over here is a little bit bloody, but that's all right. That blood will uh, wash right off. I know a lot of people say, oh, you don't eat supposed to uh, wash meat and all this and that, but I do it and I've never had it kill me yet. But uh, rather than carve all that blood off, if you tried to carve all that dried blood, all that is is dried blood. If you tried to carve all that off, you'd lose a lot of the meat. And basically, that's all there is on the inside. Now, we're going to turn it over. And see if we can't get these back straps out. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and cut. There's an outer. Now this, this deer, the guy was in a tree stand. He shot straight down through here, and it comes straight out of his breastbone. So for the type of shot that he made, you couldn't ask for a better shot. Yeah, it hit, it hit a little bit of these loin. It tore up a little loin, but that went straight down through his lung, and probably, depending on at what angle he was hitting it at, it could have caught the heart as it went out, but it pretty much dropped this deer in its tracks. And that is a good, clean, quick kill, which is what you want. You don't want the animal to suffer. Uh, or at least I don't. I don't know, maybe there's some people out there that would. But, uh, I like good, clean kills, and that way you don't have to track them. Okay. What we're gonna do now is, get, to get these loins out, you need a Nice flexible knife, and these these Rapala fillet knives are among the best. I have two of them here. Should do that again. I backed up. And uh, as you can see, of course, if you guys have used Rapala fillet knives, you can see how flexible they are. There's the other one, and these here for filleting fish, you know, but they're most excellent for for dressing out meat. Okay, I really like standing this thing up. It's hard to do with the ribs on and the breast. Let's see if we can get this thing stood up. Right. And if Ryan wants to hold it, maybe if you will come back here and shoot this way. Uh, the back straps run right up along this backbone. And they say once you get into the neck, you're into a lot of uh, ten, uh, tendon and sinew, but that's all good tender meat down through there. Got it? Get all of it now. Uh, basically, you can start anywhere. A good sharp knife, you just put it right up against that backbone, just like you're doing up starting to flat fish. And you can set right there, run it right up through, and then run it right on back. Hang on to it, bud. I want this thing dumping off on the floor. It's sliding. And uh, right on you back take to the back. Off, baby. Now, basically, it's the same thing with a fish. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this up here, but not right now because his hands are up there, and I ain't going to. This knife is very sharp, and I do not want to be cutting towards him. But uh, basically, you come down through there like that, and you just start rolling the meat back as you're cutting. Is it sliding, bud? Get it back up on that little bit. There we go. Got it. Get a hold of it. Hold it like that. Giving you problems, Mom, with the camera? It's all right. I'm just dancing with you. But uh, you basically just follow that right back. And you roll. Whew, that was close. Roll the meat back. And uh, just like filleting a fish, you can roll that meat right on off. Now what happens, this comes down like this, and then it jumps out for the rib bones. So once I get it, once I get it down to that little shelf-like, what I normally do is take and get a little start on it and uh, you can run it, there's like going to be a little shelf, 
Okay, this I'm right-handed, so I'm doing this. Gotcha. The deer should be spun around to help me out, but then you probably wouldn't be able to see nothing. But uh, you can run that knife right off that shelf. See how this comes down? And then there's a shelf right here. And you can just sit right there and run that down. Hold it. Steady, Bobby. And basically, just peel it off and run it down. This is the start of the, the, the bones where they run into the... Now, if you wanted ribeyes, you would come up through here. I'm trying to think. A ribeye is basically taken out of a section of the back. But we don't, we don't want ribeyes. What we're after is the loin, the tenderloin. Those are our steaks. Everything else gets thrown in the hamburger. Now, we might keep a couple roasts out of the rump, but uh, other than that, the... Uh, other than that, we don't we don't keep any steaks. And uh, now down here at the back, the the backbone kind of actually goes, makes little, oh, I don't know what you call them, little bumps. And you got to go out around them little bumps. Right back here at the back is where you get those little bumps. And basically, we have just about got this one done. Right about there. Got it, Ryan? Mm. Hang on now, it's going to want to flop over. And there it is. Now that's going to need a lot of cleaning, uh, hair picking. Go ahead and lay it down. That is a large, long but, uh, chicken meat. Same thing with these steaks. Basically, it's the same thing. Uh, once you trim, what we'll do here is trim this. Well, this is not silver skin. Uh, they, they call it silver skin, but this is actually a tendon that runs down the backbone. That'll all get trimmed off, and I'll dry that, clean it and dry it, for either bow strings or for making hide glue. This deer was a buck. It did not have much fat on it, but any of the fat that it would have had, what we had done was we would have kept the fat, rendered it off, add a little bit of sassafras root to it to give it a good smell because I don't like deer tallow. And uh, we usually get a pretty good bowl of deer tallow every year to uh, put on carbon steel knives and stuff like that, axes and stuff. It's great for your boots. I've used it ever since I was a kid. We'll go ahead and uh, get some of this all cut up and uh, maybe show you how to debone one of these hams or haunches, whatever you want to call it. Maybe show you how to debone a, a front front shoulder. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get the other straps and the rest of this neck meat out. Clean some stuff up and get, get all this meat off the carcass and then we'll get back with you.